see uh, the interview you gave to uh, a group of journalists was widely reported. I read the reports in at least about six newspapers, and all the six newspapers said the same thing. Right. Uh, how could they have misquoted you? Because they all stated that you said this country <laughs> trained you and that you, know, you are disposed to give him back to your country. And that if the president consults you at any time, you'll be willing uh, to offer him the benefit of your uh, knowledge and experience. Uh, and you, you're saying you didn't say so, you were misquoted. So what exactly did you say? Because six, seven newspapers can't all be wrong. Now, let me... <laughs> well, you know, people in your profession sometimes can be mischievous. Now, if I, there was a gentleman, first of all, the guy who uh, posted it in his paper, the leadership, they were not at the press conference. Now, if they asked me uh, that what would I do if Tinumbu calls me, and I said e precisely, exactly, that if he calls me, I will pray for Nigeria. Listen, I, I am not a, a, a flip-flopper by any profession. I retired as a general. Which, what would he be calling me for? We don't belong to the same party. If he wants to say, ah, you know, chief, good morning, and I say, Mr. President, that is if all the court cases are over. We are still in court. Even when Papa uh, Olusi came, trying to convince me to go and pay uh, a congratulatory uh, visit to him, I said, no, I can't do that. So what futuristic thing, what would they be doing in their calculations? I've told you I have no personal qualms with this gentleman. The only differences we have are purely administrative. Their managerial style are not in my style. So why would I, at this age, yeah, be running around for, 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 for a job? Job at what? The first time I was exposed to public uh, 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 management, I was 42 years old. Now I'm almost 40. My, my, my first child is 50 years plus. Now, why would I be looking for any job if he calls? And uh, you cannot disrespect him. But to put it in his own mind, you know, that I, Bode Judge, will, will be looking for a job at this time. Come on, let some of these people put on their thinking cap and stop spreading unnecessary rumor. I am not a green chicken. I can fight when it is necessary, but I don't do it. do it because I want to do it. In fact, I was uh, one of the lackeys who, who was quoted, because it was my son who called me, that daddy hear what this fellow said, and I want to advise him, back away from me. Is that enough? That is the Kayamu boy. I did not say that, and I will never say it. I am not looking for any job, and I, I have reached... The, 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 the end of my own public uh, 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 career. Now, you look at the issue. Like I said, at the age of 42, I was a military governor. I've had appointments in the villa. I have served. With you, Ruben, too, you remember uh, where you were serving in the villa. I was always there, you know, on consultations, on advice, and, you know, uh, with President Jonathan, I worked with Baba for eight years, and I'm, I am not a deputy chairman Southwest. I was deputy national chairman of the party for the whole country. What am I looking for now? Let these boys be a little bit careful. You know, this, this attitude, this cavalier attitude, and this irresponsible uh, 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 bunch of... Uh, uh, people trying to sell their newspaper. Please, clear from my own yard, my own yard, because I am still a lion that I can bite. My, the boy, somebody put a question. Sir, if he calls you to come and work for him, I say me work for him, not possible. But I will, if he calls, I will pray for Nigeria. And I'm still saying it, because blessed are the peacemakers. 
because they will be called the children of God. Salmon on the mountain. So what am I looking for at this age? I, I don't even wake up that early to go to my own personal office. So what, I, what is it that uh, I left back in public office and I have stated emphatically that at the end of all these courts, uh, court uh, trials and visitations, I will be going away from partisan politics. I had put in 25 years of my life in the military, and I thank the government of this country. I thank my God for giving me that opportunity because I was well trained. And I have, by the end of this year, I would have put in another 25 years in public, uh, in politics. 50 years of my life in the service of this country, and I'm going to reinvent the wheel? No, 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 no. They should please be very careful. Yeah. Turn their attention to themselves. They got more problems to solve, and we'll pray that there will be peace in Nigeria. You know, that's yeah. all. We are no longer where we, are, we were, and the, the respectability is gone. And you, you know, you have a lot of young minds, you have a lot of young people. Uh, General Gowan was 31 or 32 when he became the, became the head of state. Baba Obasanjo was 39 when he became the head of state. Me, I'm close to 80. I'll be looking forward to go and do what? They have so many younger generation, right, younger sir. people, and we will play the Baba Dugo. If there is anything going, I will remain a public commentator. That's all, period. All right, sir. Okay, thank you, Chief George. I'd like to rewind yeah. a little or still perhaps uh, yeah. talk about what happened at that meeting. Since, you know, from your, what you've said, the report by one of the newspapers wasn't factual, I'd like you to share yeah. with us some of the things that no. perhaps the outcome of that meeting from your perspective. So as you mentioned, Paolusi was there, okay. Justice Olorunimbe was there, and some other uh, members of both the APC and the PDP. What we heard or what was reported, what we reported was that at that meeting, they had talked okay. about a sort of so, some form of reconciliation and you going to pay the president a visit, a, solidarity, well, a goodwill visit and the likes. Were there other things that were discussed at that meeting? Uh, perhaps uh, you, beyond you being involved in government, were there some outcomes from that, from that meeting? Was there any message you asked the delegation to pass on to the president that you'd like to share with us this morning? You know, let, let, let me be uh, clear here. First of all, to me, it was a rare privilege for an older group to pay you a visit in your office. Culturally, they should have invited me to come. But because it would be politically inexpedient, they came to my office. They sent a very good friend of mine that they wanted to visit me. Of course, I obliged them. And we sat, we discussed, and they said, look, buddy, that was Papa Lucy. Because it's an older person in from my state and from my area too. We belong to two different political uh, parties. He said, but they look. First thing is we want to apologize because we know we have offended you. Two, we would like us, ir irrespective of political affiliations, to set up a platform where we can discuss issues about our state. Brilliant. The first one I accepted, I said to Papa, I said, look, Papa, I am not God. I have forgiven, you know, uh, because the Almighty God tells us in his holy book, vengeance is not yours. Vengeance is his. And I have seen him at play. So I said, sir, Papa, let's, let's, uh, let's roll on. I've done that. Number two, uh, let's set up this, uh, you know, uh, a platform and that would include people from different political parties and those who are not even politicians to discuss issues that will possibly, positively impact on our state, especially the youth. I said I have no problems with that. The last item was that I should also be 
like a, a governor of Oyo, a governor Wiki, my little brothers, that I should also go to Abuja uh, to go and congratulate uh, Ashiwaju. I said, Papa, I am sorry. At this point, I can't do it. Why can't, can't, can't I do it? One, I am a life member of the board of trustee of our party, the PDP. I'm an, an, an irredentist member of that party. Two, we are in court. We are still battling this issue of the presidential elections, governorship elections, and all the others. So it will be inappropriate, absolutely inexplicable on my part, being a very senior member, and I'm the one from the whole of Southwest representing this, the, the, uh, the Southwest in the national caucus of the party. Should I do something that would not be acceptable to people? No. I wasn't brought up that way. And then Papa Lucy thanked me, and uh, we, you know, it, it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, meeting, and I appreciated that. So, and the, 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 the thing now they said was that now let's cease fire. Let the will of God prevail. I said, okay, sir. Once the courts have taken their decision, we pray for this country. Of course, every sane Nigerian, every sane Nigerian who loves this nation, because we don't want to end up like Somali or end up like uh, uh, Sudan or all these failed states. We should pray for Nigeria because we want peace here. And, and, and I have been <laughs> both in the military and in the civil life been everywhere, I can tell you which room is what in that same villa. So what am I going to be looking for there? At this age, I'll be running around and I'm going to walk. I go, walk for who? If you discuss, want to discuss, come around to my office, fine. If he calls and says, hello, I say hello. That's civil in life. The fact that we are two different political uh, uh, parties doesn't mean we are enemies. You know, we can disagree without being disagreeable. For God's sake, let these uh, job seekers go and look for their job. I have run my race. Look, I was governor. I was uh, a, a director under General Dia. I retired from there as a commodore. I had also been in the political arena of Nigeria, worked with Baba, Work with Yara Dua. I was director general of General Yara Dua, I mean, uh, late Yara Dua's uh, campaign, national campaign. And I have worked with Jeff, uh, President Jonathan. So what else? There are so many younger ones. I can't do that now. And all these boys spreading rumors to slam you and to, to, to red flag you, they need to, 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 to revisit what we call Yaba Pausi, you know. The, the, the mental hospital. What, am I, what is it? And, 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 and what I call them is they are convolutedly, convolutedly insane. Chief George, thank you for, um, you know, for your time so far. I yes. just want to ask you to weigh in on, well, yes. what's perhaps been a defining moment in the few days of President Tinubu's tenure which of course is his announcement of the removal of fuel subsidy and the consequences thus far. I mean, currently the, the government is in talks with organized labor to see how they can work around ensuring that people do not suffer too much from the impact of the removal of fuel subsidy. Whilst there have been many um, you know, statements in support of the removal, the both from international and local organizations, the criticism by a number of people is the how, how this was done, the timing of it, and the fact that perhaps there ought to have been certain That's measures right. of plans in place. But I'd like to get your view on the um, announcement by the president on the removal of fuel subsidy. Or, you know, how should it have been done? Do you agree yeah. with it? Or how best could it have been done? You know, you remember when they asked me, what would I do if 
Bola calls me. I said I will pray for Nigeria. One, he makes, this is, I am not in that field of operation. That's not my area of operation. But what I have read, I've listened to all sides of arguments. He makes, he has told us there is a big hole in the, in the finances of this country. And that big hole, that black hole, has been absolutely monumental. It's a leakage where people have stolen so much of our wealth. Fine. You know, when you are at that level, in that villa, you know you need a lot of prayers. Sometimes you can have very salient points, but your approach in resolving it may be calamitous. To me, it is, the delivery was okay. He said, yes, he was going to remove this. And of course, you know, the humongous pain you are inflicting on everybody because the price of petrol will now go from 168 naira per liter to about 500 naira per liter. That's a serious jump. It would affect both the uh, commuters. It would affect even those who are not working for government, those in the private sector. The market, the mummy market, the, uh, you go to, to buy uh, vegetables and all that, everything will skyrocket. So what do you do? You are, it's like, oh, I won the election. The people voted for me. It means you are saying that the will of the people uh, put you there. So what do you do to the people? Do you now go and start impinging on them? Pain? No. So the approach and the delivery, they, you know, you, you don't put a cart before the horse. If you have sat down, you have done a thoroughbred analysis, the impact assessment, and what they will do, not just slam dunk everybody, and then we are in this quagmire, of course people will react. Oh, we will have palliatives. What palliatives? Instant, look, when you are in that place, <laughs> and I've been there, I've worked with three presidents, I have worked as a military governor, and I've worked, you need guidance of the Almighty God to deliver you, to direct you, to protect you, so that as you go on that journey, you will do less damage to the people. This was a calamity that was far more than expected. You have just won election, you claim. So the only thing you can do to say thank you to the people is to pin and push and, 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 and afflict them. It's not, it's not right. It's not right. So we are waiting for the results in the court, my party. And I am sure that uh, justice will be done. And once that is done, whoever wins, all of us will need to pray for this country. You need to pray for your leaders because if they misdirect us, from the, and we must alter course because the course of action, the journey we are going, we are in a very terribly wrong direction. So many areas of our economy has collapsed completely. We are, we are, we are hanging in there. We are at the precipice. We need prayers, not power. Power corrupts, and power, absolute power corrupts absolutely. It is not that you are there, you are swinging your power. No, you need the people. The will of the people is what put you there. And you must manage the resources of this country for the betterment of the people. Not to yourself or to your child or your dad. You, you must put a smile on the faces of people. Even uh, my little Aburo, uh, Femi Bajabia Mila, also came to me to say, Baba, look, Egbo, Let's, let's try and uh, be peaceful. I said, fine, you know, but let them 
institute a, a skill acquisition programs in every local government of the state so that these young ones can have skills. You know, you, you, there is a popular saying, if I have to give you fish, I'll feed you. But no, you can't perpetually be giving them fish, food to eat, teach them how to fish so they can be on their own. We need a, a, a new beginning. We have so bastardized the system, bashed the system, and it is not only in Lagos or West. The whole of this country, from Sokoto to Calabar, from Boronu to Lagos, from Jigawa to the Delta, we need the, the, the intervention of the Almighty God to give us leaders, managers, who will be more committed to serve the people rather than serve themselves. Okay. We are in a Chief. quagmire. Chief. It, is, it is so disturbing to me. And I pray, the only thing I know what to do, pray to God Almighty to guide. That's all you can do. Whatever it is will be recorded on the pages of history. Whether you do it well or you don't do it well, the pages of it, General Buhari is out now. The post term analysis will be on the pages of history. What did he do in this sector? What did he do here? All those things that he commissioned that were not completed, who took him there to complete them? People are not stupid. We can see. So it will be written against him. Look at the electoral process. I was dancing in my office when he made that international broadcast that he's going to leave a positive legacy to take us from the doldrums of hell. These interlopers, these manipulators, things done by hand to go through the most modern technology. What did we find? Absolute garbage. They reverted back to that and we are back in the Stone Age. These are issues that are affecting the minds of this, the, the, the same people of this country. I'm not talking about uh, 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 praise singers. They are the ones looking for whatever, and whatever else you are looking for. The day you die, end of story. Chief. So why don't you do something? Chief, I would like to ask you for one, yes. one more clarification. You were quoted in all those right. uh, newspapers that reported your interaction with journalists. Are saying there is nothing personal between you and President Chinobu, but that you disagree with yes. his methodology of governance. I'm well, quoting now. They said methodology absolutely. of governance. Yes. Okay, what is it exactly yes. that you right. disagree with in terms of his approach to governance? Now that he's there, he, he has gone from the city to the, uh, to the uh, center. So <laughs> what red flags should we look out for? You know, thank you, Ruben. You hit the nail on the top, as usual. Now, one of the major differences is lack of in-depth analysis on your managerial style. Now, let me tell you, on your inaugural day, you made a pronouncement that I am removing the subsidy, fuel subsidy. So now, do you know the pain that has caused? The moment he made that statement, we started seeing queues in petrol stations. When my boys came back, they said, sir, now they are selling petrol at 488 Naira per liter. I said, what? Now, what was the price? Just that statement, that is not a super manager. A manager would have done an analysis, the impact on the people. What do you think public office is defined for? In any political class, public office is defined as the management of the resources of the land for the benefit of the people. Now, if he has thought through this, you know, thoroughly, the impact it will have. How do I assuage the pain? 
What would I do to reduce, to ameliorate the pain this will cause on the people who gave me the mandate to manage the resources of their country for them? And so it comes to what I'm saying. If you, maybe because I was in the military, do you think they will give me maybe about 100 boys for an operation that, which can claim the lives of every one of them or some of them, that I'm to take them for an operation? And you wouldn't have sat down to go into in-depth analysis. What are the uh, factors leading us there? What are the, uh, uh, the, the, the instruments, the powers that they have that we don't have? What are the intelligence reports? What are these? What are that? You would sit down. This is where I said we have our differences. I don't. I had been in public office since the age of 42. I was a military governor of two states now, the old Ondo state. You mean to have gone there? I wish I could bring the reports of the then president, uh, by, uh, my, my big boss, General Babangida, when he visited Ondo state, what he read, what he, what he wrote as commendation. You don't go to public office and think it, you are there to manage the resources of the people for your benefit, for your daughter, for your child, for your son, for your wife, and your family members. That is absolutely incorrigible. You can't do that. The essence, and we were in the military. We were not voted in, we, but we needed. There was a, 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 a systemic way by which we were able to govern. Because there was not the, uh, the, the legislative arm of government under military administration. But you must positively impact on the people because you are managing the resources for their benefit. And so this is where we differ. You just don't wake up, slam dunk a policy that has not been well thought of. So what other differences are we talking about? Those are the issues that I'm, that, that I'm saying. Think through. Get all your, your, your eggheads. Get all your, 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 your team. Look at the issues. Let them give you the papers. The impact. How do you ab ab avoid pitfalls? How do you avoid some, some uh, a nuisance value as you journey through that place? It's not a matter of sitting down there and it's, uh, you don't care what happens. You have to care. Because you, you, you campaign, you beg the people, please trust me. That's, that's all it is. When you are campaigning, you are saying, please trust me that I will manage your resources for your benefit. That is the essence of it. And that's why we are saying, let the will of the people prevail. How do you get the will of the people to prevail? A proper electoral process. When people go to the polls, we are saying, I've listened to the, this campaign. This is the man I believe can manage the resources of my state for my benefit. But what are we finding? Manipulations of the papers, of the resource sheets, and all that. So they emerge not having any concern whatsoever to the people. So these are the major areas of separation. That's all. And I will say it to his face. I will say it anywhere. Because it's, it is negatively impacting on this country. I was born here. I grew up here. I went to school here. This country trained me. We got to put something back. Each time I look back, at the time I was growing up in that Lagos Island, there was sanity there. There was, there was the communion living in that place. The fear of God was, was our centerpiece. But you go there now, totally, totally confused. I mean, I, and I'm still living through that. It, 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 it gives me so much pain in my heart. This is, this is the state? Is this what we are, we are living for this future generation? No, no. We got to do something much better than this. Look at little Rwanda there. The head of state had completely transformed that nation. 
with all these people. Even if you meet somebody at the airport, what he will tell you about his nation, you, you, you will be so happy for them. That is what we want. Everybody is crying. It's not a matter of tribal issues now. This nation is drifting. It's taking in so much water. As a seaman, you know, if your ship is taking in so much water and you don't quickly arrest it, you go below the sea. That's not what we want. Yes, sir. That great country, that, 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 that a, a nation that, you know, the giant of Africa. Yes. For every 10 Nigerians, seven are uh, for every 10 Africans, seven are Nigerians. Go to anywhere in the world, in any profession, you will find our people. So what the goddamn hell is wrong with us at home? We need prayers and we need committed people. We can still salvage it. All if right. they are very serious, and the people should demand it.